to say Kahin, uh, fled war-torn Ethiopia 15 years ago and delighted to say she joins me now. Good morning. Good morning, Gabby. Uh, I'm sorry to take you back 15 years because I know it was very horrific for you, but what was life like at home? Um, when I left, it was quite chaotic. It, it was uh, the border war between Ethiopia and Eritrea and uh, my mum had to make the decision of leaving because it wasn't safe uh, for us. So what, obviously that journey was very traumatic in itself, but what was it like when you arrived here? How were you treated? <sighs> the treatment was not that bad, but uh, for me as a 17-year-old woman, it was quite difficult because it has to start from zero. First from the weather to the language and everything else, I had a comfortable life to start. and. I had to start from zero basically and for me not being able to speak English was a, a bigger thing because not speaking, not communicating means no opinion, no idea to share and that was the biggest problem I think. And how did people treat you? Um, this country, I have been fortunate enough, I had a lot of lovely people in my life that I've met in the last 15 years uh, as well as when I was an asylum seeker refugee and today and people have treated me fair but I had my fair share of racism and, and so on, um, living in Manchester. What sort of things were happening? Um, fire through the letter you know, box, eggs on the windows and stuff like that. And how did you cope with that? With, with coping the fact that you've left most of your family behind at home, how did you and your mother cope? I, I think you kind of feel that um, it's me who came, so it's almost you have to accept it, which is not fair to accept because I say to in my line of work today you should not accept racism but at the time because I was young and because uh, it was a new country you feel like you, you have to accept but it's not um, something that I will advise today uh, that people need to speak up about uh, things and racism and difficulties that you face but at the time it was quite difficult I had to stay home basically I would leave in the morning to go to college and then um, come back home around five o'clock and not leave because of fear and my mum wouldn't let me go out either because she was scared that maybe I'll be attacked on the street or something like that. What do you say to, okay, to those people these days who might treat people like that but also to the, the press and lots of people who say that uh, refugees come over here and they take benefits and they take the jobs? I, I, I disagree with that because I'm myself a refugee and I never been on benefits. I've been working since uh, I arrived in the UK and, and people come for protection. That is the most important thing. People leave behind home, work, family, children, parents, husband and wife and, and they so, you know, they, they seeking protection because they're torn by war, by persecution within their own country. And that is the reason they're leaving. And this country has a history of protecting people. And, and that's what I want to see, that people get in protection when they're in this country. Now, you're actually working with refugees now, aren't yes, you? Yes, I do, yes. What is it you do? Um, we, the project's called Rainbow Haven, and I, it's a charitable organisation which uh, support newly arising as refugees and asylum seekers. So we have a dropping centre that people come uh, to seek some support. Uh, from emotional support to um, having a hot meal to advice. I'm an advice worker, trained advice worker. So um, we see people coming through this horrific journey that they're making and, and they're younger and younger. And, and this year we, we've, been, we've done our auditing and we have seen over 600 people individual through the three day dropping a week. So that has been a, a, a double from, since last year. So. But you now your life is quite wonderful. You found your sisters again. Yes. You're all together. Yes. But also you fell in love with your first love. Is that right? <laughs> yes, it is right. Yeah. He he. We grew up together, and he's now uh, in Manchester with us. And we had twin boys, uh, Jovan and Elias, and they're five. And uh, yes, we've been apart for nine years, but we're back together now. How wonderful! Thank Lovely. you. Lovely. Real pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much indeed, Susie.